Hi, everyone. I am not officially back, but I did want to hop in here really quickly and say a quick hello, see how everyone's doing, see what's up. What do you guys need? Uh, what have you been up to the last few months? For all of you who have taken the time to reach out to me and see how I'm doing and see what I'm up to, I can't tell you how heartwarming that has been for me. So thank you for all of your beautiful messages and for taking the time to really connect and reach out. I really appreciate it. This year has been busy so far. I do have several projects that I'm working on, and I'm hoping to release some new material to you guys in the next one to two months. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out the best route forward for this particular channel, and I promise to keep you updated as soon as I have a final idea of what I want to do. In the meantime, I have been on a few podcasts, and I wanted to share a little teaser with you from this podcast that I did just last week and encourage you to go watch and take a listen. This is my second appearance on my friend Eric's Ultra Marathon Mindset Podcast. And in this episode, we were talking about how your breath is such a powerful self-care and self-regulation tool because it can so quickly and easily tap into the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual aspects of anything that you're going through, any issue, disease, dysfunction, injury. You know, your breath really acts as that bridge that sort of connects all of these different aspects of your health challenges. And for that reason, it's really empowering to work with the breath. Eric was kind enough to share a little two-minute trailer with me. And in this part of the conversation, we just started to talk about how to utilize your breath as a tool for pain management specifically. I know that this interview is going to be really relevant to a lot of you in the audience. Uh, I know this because you've been sending me questions even on these months that I haven't been posting. And I hear a lot about how can I get into my breath practice safely? What is the best approach for these symptoms that I'm experiencing? How do I approach pain and physical dysfunction utilizing the breathing? And also maybe how do I avoid breathing techniques that might actually exacerbate my symptoms? So I hope you get a lot of value out of this conversation. Make sure you check this quick trailer, and then I'll be sure to leave the link for the actual full interview in the video description. And otherwise, I miss you guys, and I promise to be back very soon. Breathing into that. So that's a long way of asking the question, <laughs> how, do you, how, how, can, how can breathing help those kinds of pains? Yeah, well, I mean, think about what happens when you're in pain, right, Eric? There's a constriction, right? It's a full body constriction. Think about what it felt like to be on the ground, unable to move. There's an immobilization. There's something that feels like paralysis. All the muscles have constricted. You can't move. You're guarded. You're scared, right? Your nervous system is going into a major stress response. If you're in pain, there's no way. You're, you're already breathing shallowly, right? Now you're not getting enough oxygen into the body, but more importantly, you're not getting enough oxygen to the cells that need it, right? And you're cutting off blood flow. So this is a bad, 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 right? Like we're not, nothing beneficial is happening right now. We've cut off blood flow, we've cut off oxygen flow. Uh, we have this interruption in the electrical circuitry, right? There's this, again, this ionic kind of disruption in the body. And we're totally, we're physically, mentally, emotionally constricted and in uh, defense mode. So what does breathing do? It taps into all of those things, right? It starts to slowly unfold and reverse all of those things. Number one, the fastest is it taps into the nervous system. So if I can slow down my breath in those moments of extreme stress, extreme pain, I am sending a signal. I'm consciously choosing to send a signal to my nervous system that overrides what my body is doing right now. I'm telling my brain, this is okay. We're safe. It's a sunny day. People are on this trail. Someone's going to find me. Someone can help me. I'm not dying. There's no blood. My heart seems to be in good condition, right? You start to go through it and you start to send that signal of, okay, this is not the worst catastrophe. I'm safe, right? Your breath sends that signal because of how your diaphragm interacts with your vagus nerve and your nervous system. If you can slow down your breath and deepen it, you start to activate more of that parasympathetic response, which is your rest and digest or your, your safety nervous system, right? Okay, so now we're feeling safer. Now, if you can continue to breathe that way, you can also start to drive more blood flow to those areas that have been like this, right? Vasoconstriction, no blood is getting there. And if no blood is getting there, no oxygen is getting there. And if no oxygen is getting there, those cells can't produce energy, right? So, so now you're starting to get a little bit more vasodilation. Maybe we're getting a little bit more blood flow to those areas. You're bringing oxygen. Now maybe the cells can start to operate a little bit more uh, appropriately. 
the hydration is a big deal though, right? Mm -hmm. So now the, the one thing that breathing did not solve is the hy hydration issue. <laughs> so if you are dehydrated, there, there is gonna have to be that electrolyte component at some point for sure, but the breathing will get you 75% of the way there, I think, to just bring you back into your body, send a message of safety and get you moving at least slowly again until you can get some water.